<laughs> just joking. <laughs> People who think you're cute are gonna be surprised this. <laughs> Corgi, you are acting like what people think corgis do. He says, I'm very big. <laughs> you are very big. <laughs> strong, too. Good morning. This is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, the snarling corgi. <laughs> and we're here with Joe Follinsby and his corgi, Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi, and I might have to put mine down because this is a lot of Corgi here. You are so pretty, though. And today we're going to talk to Joe a little bit about his experience with the T-Touch harness, what harnesses he used before, what failed, what succeeded, and what his experience has been like using the harness. And then we're going to go outside for a separate live, which may have to be a video because my internet connection isn't great. And we'll post that with Arrow learning how to use the labyrinth. So, Joe, tell us about your T Touch harness experience. Right. I'm gonna put Arrow down. Hold him. <laughs> Let him wander off. Oh, yeah, I'll hold on to him down here. Okay. <laughs> um, my experience with this harness is it's an excellent harness in a couple of ways. One, it's very, very easy to use. And two, it controls the dog a little bit more. Um, Arrow's a big, strong dog, and he's only about a year old, but. Um, using the regular neck collar um, in training him to not go off to the side or pull to the front. Um, it was a little bit easier, actually a lot easier with the T-Touch harness in that you could kind of steer the dog and if he starts to pull, you pull on one side and it slows him down immediately. Um, so I love it. It's, like I said, very easy to use, very easy to put on. Um, you can keep it on him, actually, when you come back from a walk for a little bit. Stop. And it really doesn't bother him. You don't want to keep it on too long. But, um, yeah, so I love it. Was it hard learning how to put it on him? A bunch of people are getting new ones in the yeah. mail and um, so my, are concerned about getting it on. <laughs> yeah, my advice on that is if you have a stuffed corgi around your house. If, or another dog. <laughs> or another dog. Um, or cat. <laughs> that's how I learned. I practiced on, we have a a decent sized stuffed corgi in our house, so um, a little toy. So I practiced on that, but no, once you um, once you get it down, just practice, practice. Once you get it down, you can do it with your eyes closed. And do you put it on over his head, or you, do you do the two buckles and then put it on? I put it on over his head. I put him in between my legs, so he's facing forward, and I pull the big loop first full, over his head and the, the small loop second over his head. And then do there's a the way strap. to do it from there. You can undo a strap on the right top side and then his left leg goes through the loop, pull it underneath him and snap it. It's really, really, really easy. And that doesn't work for everybody because a lot of yeah. dogs don't like things going over their head. Yeah. Um, but yeah. as I showed you in another episode, you can lay it on their back and then do it up as well. Yeah. Now, Joe's problem is that this is a very squirmy dog and it's hard to get clothes on him because he's a baby. And so that's why he holds him between his legs and then dresses him that way. <laughs> Arrow. Uh, tell us, Joe, about your experience walking him. Like you've used it with the long leash and with the two snaps. Can you tell us anything you've noticed about the difference or uh, how hard it is to switch yeah, it when you need to? Uh, the two snaps is good if you know you really need to control him, if he's excited, if he sees something, if we're walking and he sees an animal or something like that, he's gonna start pulling. Um, once you put that on him, it'll slow him down. It's gotten to the point now that I don't have to use the double very much because he's gotten good. He doesn't pull with the single like he used to. Um, but if he does, I just go back to the double and it kind of teaches him as we walk to, you know, that he needs to keep it slow and stay close to me. So lately I haven't had to use it, but it all depends on the surroundings and his mood. You know, if he's all ramped up like he can be um, and he's pulling, then I say, no, no. And we stop and I put the second the second snap on and, and use it that way, so. You have big feet, son. <laughs> and you were using a step-in harness um, as a rental before you got this one. Tell us about your experience with that 
versus this one. It, it, I recommend the step in for a lot of people with rapidly growing puppies like him. Yeah, it, the, the <laughs> step in finally worked. We were able to find a size. He was in between sizes for a while. So once he started gaining a little bit of weight, um, I got that one from you, Sally, and it, it works. It works well, but it doesn't fit. This one fits really well. It just, it's like it's just made for a corgi. You know, it seems to be. It's for a lot of dogs, but it. It you know, fits corgis very, very well. Yeah, and one of the reasons it fits corgis so well, um, because, you know, they're long and they're big chested often, like this one's going to be. Um, they're so adjustable. That's why we like to give them to people with basset hounds and shih tzus and pugs and corgis and a lot of the ones with the big chest. But it's because it's so adjustable, it still fits wonderfully on greyhounds and uh, dachshunds and Labradors and Golden Retrievers. So it's got a lot of flexibility because you can adjust it in so many ways. So do you have anything else you want to say about the harness? No. Nope, Arrow? Love, Arrow <laughs> loves it. I love it. It's all good. I'll have it forever. I doubt I'll ever use anything the rest of his life besides this if I can get to it all the time. Yeah. My Lord, unless yeah, they come up to <laughs> He is a squirmer. And you can see he's lots bigger than Tristan, although right now Tristan's closer to the camera, so he looks gigundor, but he's over 30 pounds and Tristan's barely uh, 19. So there's a big difference in size of Corgi here. So if you have any other questions about the harness, you can of course uh, write them here or email me, sallymorganpt at gmail.com. And we're going to end this uh, and then go out into the yard and uh, put this young man in the labyrinth. He's, uh, as I've said, pulley on the leash, enthusiastic, um, a little unfocused, but not terribly. And he's scared of the ground poles. So it's going to be really interesting for him to have to walk in the labyrinth. And then sometimes he gets so scared he doesn't eat treats, which happens sometimes with quite a few dogs, actually, that we see in T-Touch classes because those dogs are the ones that have had trouble otherwise. So we'll see how he is. Joe brought his own treats today, and um, Arrow has not been a fan of the treats I offer. You're not a duck man. <laughs> So uh, we'll try that out. So thanks for joining us today for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And we'll see you tomorrow. We have dog school. I don't know when I'll post this other video. So uh, we may see you Thursday. Thanks for joining us.